we're going to cover a pile of milk cow feeding questions because this is something I'm constantly getting asked. So I have a huge list of questions that people have asked me. I've been saving them. So today's the day when we're going to answer them. Why do milk cows always look so skinny? This is our top question for sure. Frankly, it's because they're genetically built different. Just like people have different genetics, I'm a tall green bean. That's my genetics. It's not anything I do to make myself look this way. I am a tall green bean. No matter how much I eat, this is how I look. So milk cows genetically look skinny, which is why later we're going to go over what body condition score is and how to kind of really easily body condition score a cow. I'm not super technical about it, but I'll give you some tips for, you know, things that should trigger you to more technically body condition score your cow for if they're too skinny or too fat. So how much grain should you feed? There is obviously different things. Some people don't want to feed grain and that's okay. You don't have to feed your cow grain. Personally, we feed our cows some grain because they were not raised from calves on a grain-free diet. So it's really hard to transition cows to a grain-free diet if they have always had grain. Their rumen is built for it. It's conditioned for it. We have really long, cold winters. So if feeding them a bit of grain every day helps them out, that's what we do. So if you're not on the side of a cow needing to be grain-free, how much grain should you feed? The biggest thing to know is that you should never drastically change how much grain you're feeding a cow because you're gonna mess with their rumen and you're gonna make them bloat. We will also go over what does blo bloat look like. So a rough guideline is in pounds of milk and pounds of grain. So a gallon of milk weighs eight to 10 pounds and let's say eight pounds. one gallon of grain, sorry, one pound of grain to three pounds of milk. So if my cow is giving me, um, let's say Jessa right now is giving 2.5 gallons a day. So times eight, that's 20 pounds. Divided by three is six to seven pounds. It's a rough guideline on how much grain she should be getting. She should be getting, and she's actually getting seven and a half pounds. So that's pretty perfect. Um, she was giving more like three, three and a half gallons of milk and getting 10 pounds of grain, but we've dropped their grain and dropped them to once a day milking. What about protein percentages? How much protein should I be feeding? This one's also a tricky one and I'm not a feed analyst or nutritionist and where you live, you're going to have different available feeds. There's going to be different things that you're going to want to use. It's hard to say. Right now, we are we have been more fancy with our cow feed before, but right now, we're actually, we just buy it bulk from a local dairy farm. It's a barley-based feed mixed with a protein premix that's got all the minerals and proteins and everything. And this is, um, this is just kind of a really easy way. And we know their cows in our climate thrive on this. So that's what we're feeding for now. Does milk taste different depending on what you feed the cow? Yes, for sure. Um, like if you feed them too many sunflower seeds, which is like a good fat you can feed them, you can end up with strong tasting milk. Um, fresh grass will taste stronger than hay milk. Um, there's lots of different factors there. What about feeding before calving and right away? So this one has a lot of different opinions to it. So I'm not really up for weighing in on this, but if my cow is in good condition, I will not feed her any grain during calving until she calves. Once she calves, then we will feed her, we'll start feeding her grain and everything because she's putting out a lot of energy and she needs to have it, you know, replenished. I did have a cow that was a little skinny when she was dry, so I fed her just a couple pounds of grain a day. So here's, so this is, you know, there's a, this was like a question box that people ask questions in. So I'm 90 days in, the cow's 90 days in, supply struggles, and I'm calf sharing. 
probably you're not actually having supply struggles. Probably it's that you're calf sharing and she's holding back milk and cream. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Yeah, that's just, that's the calf sharing. That's not supply struggles. How much hay does a cow eat in winter? So here in our winter, a cow eats roughly, a milk cow eats roughly her weight in hay a month. So my cows are about 900 to 1,000 pounds. So they eat 900 to 1,000 pounds of hay a month from October to May. So October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May for eight months. They're, so they're gonna eat, I'm gonna account for 8,000 pounds of hay per milk cow for the winter. We don't have to buy it all up front because we um, friends store it for us. And that definitely helps not have to deal with so much hay storage. What about feeding a cow during or after milking? So I don't think you should feed a milk cow grain while you're milking her because she's gonna be more fidgety. And if she finishes her grain before you stop milking, Quite often she's gonna be reaching to try and get the last bits of grain and she's moving around. We find our cows are a lot more patient and easy to milk cows if they get fed afterwards. And this can be difficult if you are used to feeding during because you're gonna to have to train them. It's gonna take you a few days to a week of some more frustrating milkings. But if you're struggling with milking with your cow, stepping around a lot, maybe she's not rude. Maybe she's just like tap dancing or shuffling around a lot. It's really worth the training and the hard week to get them into eating afterwards. What about minerals for a cow? So you can do a salt lick that has minerals in it. You can, we like to feed loose minerals as well and loose salt. Go to your local feed store and find one that's formulated for your area. There is a lot fancier things, but that's what we do. Um, is spring grass sufficient for weight gain or heavy supplementing? That one doesn't quite make sense. Um, definitely once you get into good grass, cows will naturally put on weight a lot better so you can often ease off of grain. But it's really a by the cow basis. Can you milk a cow in the evening and how long does it take to milk? You can milk a cow whatever time of day you want. I have a friend who milks it like 11 in the morning and 11 at night because that's what works best for their schedule and she's a night owl personally i like something like 7 a.m and 7 p.m um now that we're once a day milking we're doing um 4 30 in the afternoon because it kind of works well in our day that's where we figured out was the best time of day to milk once a day at this point in our lives at this time of year There's another common question about how much land do you need to feed to maintain a milk cow? Honestly, you don't need a lot of land, but you need to be then willing to buy a lot of hay. So before you buy milk cow, maybe see what hay prices are like where you live. They can fluctuate, but there's some places that it's just a lot harder to even get hay. So that's just something to really keep in mind. If you're wanting to know if a cow is bloated, you check their rumen. So behind their ribs, it makes almost like a triangle. So we've got a line behind their ribs, a line, their short ribs, and then this kind of from their hips down. We call this the rumen triangle. And if you look, it's not sticking out at all. And if we feel it, it presses like a stress ball. She's nice and full. It, you know, it can be even more full. If this was rounded and you knocked and it sounded like you're knocking on a basketball, that's telling you that there's air in there and she's bloated. Now for a simple body condition score, we're gonna look at her angles. So these are the thurls, and these are the ligaments between the pin bones, so to speak, and these are her hips. So none of her, so you can see all of these, right? You're supposed to be able to see them on a jersey. If any of these were drastic dips or jutted out, like if these were sunken or drastic or this was then like really curved in there because she didn't have much on her hind end, you know, that's what you don't want to see. I used to think that it was all about their ribs 
and how much you could see. And Clover's also heavy bred. She's probably six months pregnant right now. But being able to see their ribs, you can actually have a cow that's in really great condition, but you can still see their rib because they just have such a large barrel. So what you're more wanting to see is their top line. Nothing looks drastic. Everything's kind of gentle curves. One of our favorite things to do is to make chocolate milk when we have extra skim milk. And when I say skim milk, I don't mean like the skim milk you buy at the store. I mean like I take the whole milking and I put it in, I have these three and a half gallon food grade buckets, they fit in the fridge, I leave them there at least 24 hours, skim all the cream to make butter, and then I got like two and a half to three gallons of skim milk in there. So I can make mozzarella, we can just use it for drinking. It's still, I bet you, comparable to whole milk at the store, fat percentage wise. So I'm just hand skimming. But chocolate milk is one of our favorite ways. So I'm gonna show you how we make this really simple chocolate milk. Because we buy bulk, everything is in bulk. So I've got cane sugar. We like a cane sugar um, versus most other sugar. is a beet sugar and um, it gives me a, a sore throat. So if we're using sugar, it's cane sugar. We have some basic sea salt and then I've got a big jar of, this is raw cacao, but you can use cocoa. I just think the cacao uh, tastes Rolling better. It's, it's really nice. I'll link exact measurements for you, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna kind of wing it here because I don't need measurements. So we make, we start by making the powder and it's easier to mix if you kind of go back and forth between sugar and cocoa. It's kind of, it's a bit, it's, it's not quite equal parts. You can do it equal parts if you like it less sweet. We like a little more sugar than cocoa. And then we finish off with some salt. So you don't want to fill it all the way because then you won't be able to shake it. Get ourselves a lid. Now we just made ourselves a whole quart of dairy-free chocolate milk or hot chocolate powder for super cheap and super fast. Now, cocoa. Cocoa does not just mix into cold liquids, as you probably know. If you're going to make hot chocolate, you can just mix it into warm milk, and it's great. Oh, hey, baby, what's up? Hi, baby, what's up? <gasps> We've got a baby. Uh, hey, baby. So to make it with um, cold milk, we use the immersion blender. Yes, you can use the Nescafe or whatever and it will just like blend, mix right in. Can you hold Amos for a minute? Yeah. But um, I, that, that's really sketchy to me, the fact that the Nescafe stuff just mixes right in. Like, I, I, it's not, it's, real food doesn't do that. So what are they doing to make it do that? So this is, I'm gonna top this up so that it ends up being half a gallon, but I'm gonna start with less. So I'm gonna do about a third of a cup of the hot chocolate, of the hot chocolate chocolate milk powder. The Cuisinart brand stick blender is a good one, or Oster, those are both nice ones. I can get it, thanks, Ray. is that this is super easy to wash. You can just give it a quick rinse or, um, or throw it in the dishwasher. <laughs> dishwasher is dirty, so I'm just gonna chuck her in there. 
Now I'm gonna top this up with more milk. I'm making chocolate milk. I'm making chocolate milk. I don't like to make super potent chocolate milk because my kids drink a lot of it. If um, Marius was making this, he would probably make it a lot chocolatier, but I mean, compared to white milk, it's still pretty chocolatey. And delicious, and the nice thing is when you do that with the immersion blender, the top is all frothy. My kids are always wanting to get that top frothy bit there. No. Did you want a cup? You want the bottom frothy yeah, bit? That's oh, the bottom, they like, because it will um, sink to the bottom a bit. So you need to um, give it a little swirl around. Oh, Rowan's getting herself a bottle, she wants some. We don't really do sippy cups with Rowan, she just uses the bottle. Not yeah. Does that look pretty delicious, Fran? Mm, I like it. 